Audi City for the Engine Audi Race Day. We've reached the halfway stage of the Bank Touring Car Series and we're here at a packed Aldo Scribenti track in Port Elizabeth for rounds 9 and 10 of the Bank Touring Car Series. Will the Nissans dominate as they did in Cape Town? Just sit back and enjoy the action. As always, the drivers parade for the crowd are here to see whether the Nissans will dominate as they did in the last rounds, giving Janil de Villiers a very healthy lead in the championship. First non-Nissan is Sean van der Linde in this Sassel BMW. He's just behind leading independent Marco de Santos. Former champion is Terry Moss. Terry, home circuit, battling a bit out there today. Yeah, the three Audis are all in a bunch. We're within two hundredths of a second amongst the three of us. Unfortunately, seventh, eighth and ninth in the first heat, and I think it's eighth, ninth and tenth in the second heat. And that, that's mainly due to uh, lack of straight line speed at the moment. We've done a lot of work on suspension and chassis, which is working for us, but uh, I think we, we need a little more power to get up there. Opal's Sean Watson-Smith is another popular PE driver. Sean, the other home driver from PE, uh, seventh and tenth in both the races, and you brought your own fan club with you. Well, PE girls are always the best, aren't they? Um, yeah, we're not, not that strong in qualifying, but we're only half a second off the pace in the second race, so we're pretty pleased with that, actually. Um, I think we've got a, a good car for the race. Our, our setup is should be pretty good for the race, so I'm looking to be strong near the end. But it's Nissan's Janil de Villiers who's the man to beat. Janil, front row for the first race, second row for the second race. What went wrong or right in qualifying? I don't think anything went wrong, really. It's just uh, the first the first one, we had a very good one out. The Nissan Primera went really well, and um, we managed to get him a good lap. Um, the second one, of course, we carry the 50 kilograms weight penalty, so it makes it a bit more difficult, especially on a tight track like this. Bankman, the right deal for you. Okay, the wind is blowing in Port Elizabeth, and for the first race of the day, we've got Janil de Villiers, champion from last year, leading the championship this year in pole position. Second place is teammate privateer Mark Peters in his slush puppy BP car in second place. He's going to be quite happy with that one. Ahead of Duncan Foss, who is the other favourite to win this race. Then we've got the first of the BMWs. Sean van der Linde, now quicker than Michael Briggs. He has been slower than him in the last couple of races, now ahead. And then in fifth place, Marco de Santos in the very privateer bank fin, a value added, new to you, Lakefield auto body Nissan. So less than one second separates the first seven cars on the grid. De Villiers, the only man under the elusive one minute, five second lap time. Lap time is nearly two seconds. In fact, it's over two seconds quicker than previously. That's after resurfacing at Elder Scribanti. Mainly by Terry Moss, in fact, was responsible. Then on the left-hand side, you've got Janil De Villiers. The right-hand side is Mark Peters. And then back to Duncan Foster and the BMW of Sean van Linda. And off they go. It's going to be a great race. And already we're in car with Marco De Santos, fifth on the grid in his valid value Nissan as they come into the first right-hander. Yeah, it's a tight right-hander, always very dangerous. People trying to overtake around the outside, they very seldom get through on the first corner without touching. This occasion, no problem whatsoever. And then down into the first of the S's, very, very tight right-hander as we're going through the corner here with Sean van Linden, then a back again left uh, for the second part of the S. And then one of the quickest parts of the track, now this little left-hand uh, corner here, followed by the right-hand hanger, which is absolutely flat in one of these cars, or should be when they're on their own, and that is very, very quick. Come off there, it's a long way. But leading the race, you've got um, Janil de Villiers, followed by Mark Peters. So it is the BP Nissans, one, two, three. Graham, that uh, 50 kilograms doesn't be, seem to be holding de Villiers back at the moment. No, I don't think he'll hold it back too much. He was just be a little bit careful, make sure that his tyres don't go off. But we're in the car now of Anthony Taylor behind Michael Briggs. That's sixth place in front of the BMW. And Anthony is the first of the three Audis in seventh. Well, they're coming up to complete the first lap. It's the three BP Nissans, De Villiers, Peters the Englishman, Foss, and then the first of the BMWs. That's Sean van der Linde. We're behind Sean van der Linde with Marco de Santos. Can I have a look down the uh, right-hand side, Graham, here? Yes, he's, he's going to want to get past quickly. I'm sure he's quicker than Sean, to be honest with you. So uh, he should be able to pass him. But, you know, catching is one story, passing is another. We'll have to wait and see how he manages. Certainly has bought, with the new resurfacing, the car seemed to be that much faster here. Yeah, well, they say about two seconds lap quicker. Terry's done a wonderful job. They've resurfaced everywhere, not only the racetrack, but also the outfield as well. Back with Anthony Taylor. Oh, Michael taking a bit of a knock there against the kerb, and that's going to let Taylor through the... No, not on the inside. Just manages 
to keep behind Briggs. Only just, but they're about in front. There we've got Sean van Linden and Marco de Santos. De Santos on the outside probably can't make it through here, but possibly on the inside of the next corner. No, he's trying to go around the outside again. So, de Santos having another look. We're in car with Michael Briggs. He's in sixth position at the moment, having a look, just a little look on the inside of Marco de Santos, but the Nissans have got the power on this circuit. Yes, there's no way that Michael is going to stay with uh, that motor car right at the moment, but whether he can pass his teammate in front, Sean van Linder, that I don't know. That we're going to have to wait and see. So, as we go into lap three... And there he goes down on the oh, inside, yes, he and he's has... able to... He has indeed. Out, he basically outbraked him. That wasn't so much power. Lovely manoeuvre from the independent. Marco de Santos in his valid value Nissan. Still got Sean right behind him, trying, trying to get through the S's. No way through there, is there? Well, we'll have to see now how close, or well, it looks like he's pulling away at this point in time, uh, how, how close Sean can stay to Marco in front. Now you've got Nissan's one, two, three, four, the three factory cars plus the privateer, and then the two BMWs. And then the three Audis. Somebody's taken a drive off the outside. It's Sean Watson Smith in the first of the Patronus Opals, but the three Audis running three together. So you've got four, B four Nissan's, two BMs, three Audis. And then two the Opals. two Opals, yeah. <laughs> There's Chris Aberdeen, not having the best of seasons, is he, Graham? No, not, not at all. Uh, he hasn't enjoyed it, and uh, as I said, the, the, the slowest of the three at the present moment. And there's Taylor having a look at Briggs, telling him he's there. Bit of bumping and boring there. But that's fair. He touched, but there was no pushing off. Uh, he managed to get on the inside, and you'll probably be able to overtake him now going into the, at the end of the straight. You'll we'll have to watch and see this now. How fast are they going at the end of this straight? Haven't got a clue. No, 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 seriously, they do just over 200. 202 kilometers an hour in fifth gear, and they drop down to second gear for this corner to about 100 kilometers an hour. So Taylor's got past Briggs there. We're in car with Michael Briggs and the Sassel BMW through the S's. Taylor seems to be over the track a little bit. Well, he's trying really hard. I mean, he certainly wants to catch the BMW in front there. Um, he it's feels he can finish. Well, there's Byron coming in, obviously had some problem with his car. Privateer Byron Buerta into the pits. We go on to lap 10. It's still Nissan, 1, 2, 3, De Villiers, Peters, then Foss, De Santos, Van der Linde, and still the Audis and BMWs battling it out. Seems like they're battling it out together, the two Audis of uh, Terry Moss and Anthony Taylor. So Terry Moss, in fact, has got past Michael Briggs and Taylor, so he's now the leading of the, the three Audis. Anthony all over the place, over the dirt on the inside, over the dirt on the outside. You can see what happens there as he clips the curb on the inside, so it pushes him out further. So it's De Villiers, Peters, Foss, De Santos. They've had a battle here uh, about a year ago, wasn't it? Yes, a year ago, in fact, uh, De Santos came together with uh, Duncan and, and uh, both of them retired after that particular event. Hopefully that doesn't happen today. So Van der Linde behind there. Then we've got uh, Moss, Taylor, Van der Linde, Sean Watson-Smith. Hold on nicely, very nice. He's yeah. right up there with that with that group of Audis and the BMW of Briggs. Briggs has dropped back a long way here at this point. So we're in car with Anthony Taylor. He's following teammate Terry Moss. Audis not having the best of season, but uh, they're trying to make amends for it in really what is their home circuit. Exactly, there's a lot of competition there, believe me. Now look there, you've got the Nissan of uh, De Santos and the BMW of Sean for Linda. Sean just cannot quite make it. And there on the left is Andy Taylor with Michael Briggs trying to go around the outside. He also can't make it. So the two BMs battling to get back the positions that they've already lost. So a nice battle here with Michael Briggs in the second of the Sassel BMWs, chasing Anthony Taylor in the second of the engine Audis as they go through the S's. I don't know what's happened to Aberdeen, but he's obviously... Oh, there oh, he is there right he is. there. <laughs> okay, well, something's happened to him because he's dropped away completely. Is he coming into a tyre? Yes, possibly. Well, forward to lap 18, it's now Foss behind De Villiers. There's Mark Peters in third. George Bassett now in one of the pro cars there at the silver car. This is the Englishman, Mark Peters, in third place. De Santos, Van der Linde. And you've got the two Audis, followed by Briggs, who's dropped right back. He's in seventh place over there. He won't be happy with that particular performance. But there he is behind Anthony Taylor. Uh, two laps left. This is the second last time he has an opportunity of passing him through this corner. Didn't make it here. You'll you see, see there, Graham? I don't know if you saw that. At Taylor's back wheel just lifting slightly as they come through yeah, that sharp you, right As you're braking, all the weight goes onto the front left or right, and then the other side just lifts up and locks up a bit. But the two distance very, very close together. I wonder if there are any team orders there. But Briggs trying to pass here. And then you've got... The pro oh, they the touched, they well. touched, who's <laughs> off? Michael's on his way farming. Well, Michael trying to squeeze him, obviously got it sideways under braking because certainly it wasn't what Anthony did that made him spin off. That's lost him all those positions now that he had been fighting for. So we're back with the leaders. It's De Villiers and Foss, and they're both of them having a go at they each other. They are a bit of a go here, aren't they? But it's still De Villiers in front. In fact, Duncan lost a bit there. Obviously, he decided he wasn't going to touch his partner, and that's lost him a bit of time. Because there is, there are no team orders. The only team orders from Glen Hall, no bumper bashing.
Well, you know, that was, that was, that was fairly close. Glenn won't be that unhappy with him. But there's Terry Moss. He hasn't had a bad race for his Audi, considering where he started on the grid, he can't be too disappointed. And the crowd enjoying it here at Aldo Scribenti. This is the final lap, obviously. And these are the two championship leaders as well, Janil de Villiers and Duncan Foss in the BP Nessons. Tremendous cars, aren't they? They absolutely are. And as I say, I mentioned that before, Glenn Hall, team manager, world, world class. He does a lot of work on the Nissans that race in Europe as well, and uh, they're the quickest car to have in Europe. So Glenn is a great guy for Nissan to have. They go through the slowest part of the circuit, but there's a battle on for third place. Mark Peters and Marco De Santos. The independent De Santos, is he going to have a go on the inside? No? But he's got one corner left. One corner well, he's left. He's having to go a go through. now. Yeah, he's on the wrong side, though. Unless uh, Mark makes a mistake, he won't be able to get past. Well, look at that there. Mark on the inside, Mark on the outside. And, could and it looks like he could do it because they're certainly coming out together. Well, oh, oh, he touched him coming out of the corner the there. Grass. And that's the end of that one. So it's Peters in third, De Salas in fourth, Sean Fun in the fifth in the BMW, and Terry Moss in the Audi in sixth. And the win for Janil de Villiers makes him now the most successful South African touring car driver. He's got 30 wins, overtaking. Michael Briggs's past record. And a new lap record for third place, Mark Peters. One minute, 5.989 seconds. Janil, flag to flag, it looked easy. Duncan came back at you near the end, though. Yes, definitely. Um, it was, in the beginning, we had a good start and got around quite well. And then uh, towards the end, um, we carry the 50 kilograms. It always makes a bit of a difference in the end. Uh, so you've got to just work a, a little bit harder. But Duncan was on the charge uh, at the end, and, and I really had to on the, I think on the second last lap I had to defend quite a bit to uh, not uh, let him through there, but um, uh, it wasn't too difficult, except that I had to, to, to drive a little bit harder towards the end because the tyres and stuff went off. Bankman, the right deal for you. Well, the huge crowd at Aldo Scribanti waits in anticipation for round 10 of the Bank Touring Car Series. Michael, nice to see somebody other than the Nessons on pole position. Well, I'm sure it looks a little bit funny uh, seeing something not green on the front uh, of the grid, but it's, you know, we've always had a good run at the circuit. PEP is my hometown, so, so uh, there's a special incentive for me to do well here. And, uh, you know, the team have put a lot of effort in because, uh, you know, we, we don't want to be second anymore. We want to win races, and uh, this is the first step of putting the car on pole. One of the closest qualifying sessions seen in touring cars, only two tenths of a second separating the first six cars. Yeah, with the privateer, Mark Peters second, then Duncan, then Janil, and Mark and Santos. And here they come with the start of it with Michael Briggs leading up to this time. So yep. he will control the speed and the start of this race. Well, this is going to be interesting to see if Michael Briggs can stay in front. He's carrying 50 kilograms. The Nissans are the fastest cars on the circuit. Let's see if Michael can stay there. Home driver, Sean Watson-Smith in the Petronas Opel. Oops, losing it a little bit. Did you get a nudge there? Yeah, it just looked like it. Oh, there's Michael's through. That's it. He's now achieved what he wanted to achieve. He's probably got Peters behind him, followed by, um, who would it be? Janil and Janil Duncan Foss. Janil and Duncan Foss. And uh, in this race, Mike Briggs is going to have the widest BMW in South Africa, isn't he? Absolutely it? right. So long as he doesn't push anybody off, he has every right to drive where he wants. He just can't touch anybody. But he's actually got a bit of a gap over there right now from, it looks like, Peter, yes it is, it's Peter's in second, and then Duncan third and Janil fourth. Already uh, Marco de Santos trying to take Janil, but that won't come off. And Sean Watson-Smith in the Opal just sneaks inside one of the Audis there. Exactly. Well, we're in car with Anthony Taylor. He was the Audi that Sean Watson-Smith uh, got through. Oh, more bumping there, Graham. But he goes past the BMW of Fundalinda, so Fundalinda's dropped back another position now. As they come into the Goodyear corner for the first time, Michael Briggs, once again out in the lead of a touring car race. Long time since we've seen him there. Exactly. You can see now just how fast the Nissan is against the BMW. Michael had a terrible first race today. The second one, okay, he's hugging the inside, which means the Nissan does have the speed, but is not getting past. In fact, it didn't, didn't even get alongside. For the back, we see uh, the Opals and the out. Oh, gosh, it's oh, all happening. <laughs> just drive straight to the back of Aberdeen. Aberdeen's right. He won't be happy about that, letting everybody through. There shouldn't be any damage to the car. He should be able to rejoin as soon as everyone else is Chris's uh, season just continues to be a little bit miserable, doesn't it? Exactly. But Briggs still leading in the BMW. But they're pretty close now. Now you're with Duncan Foss behind Mark Peters. And uh, sure enough, Mark... Mike Briggs is making that BMW very wide. Mark Peters not uh, finding any way through. Mark's having a good season, second on the grid for both of the races. He's having a wonderful season, won a race earlier in the year and wants to win some more now. 
Oh, that Audi uh, there. Who's that? Uh, Andy Anthony Taylor. Taylor. He's a brilliant driver. I mean, you saw how he lost. That's a very, very fast corner. Lose it there, catch it. No problem whatsoever. He'll carry on. In car with Marco De Santos. Must be very difficult with that glare and the dust on the on the windscreen. No, I think that's the camera. You don't actually see that. You're looking far beyond that when you're driving a racing car, so you, you won't see any of that at all. Well, back up to 200 kilometers an hour as they hit the right-hander. It's still Michael Briggs, Mark Peters, Duncan Foss, Janil de Villiers, Marco De Santos. Well, obviously, Peters is coming out of that bottom corner slower because Michael got to the end of the straight there again with the gap between him and Peters. So, Mark is going to have to actually get it together to come out of that first corner and in order to try Chris and Chris Aberdeen super after his spin. But now the yeah. Nissan's running three behind Michael Briggs. It's still Peters, Foss, De Villiers. They're right up behind him. Are they going to find a way through? Well, well that's where Mark's they're going to, going to have a look on one it. side. Because Michael and Briggs are very slow through that, through that hangar. Look how the, uh, the, the Nissan's get alongside. In fact, Peters has lost a position, which puts De Villiers now into second. Now, that'll make it more difficult for, for Michael Briggs, because he is slower going into that section. And Duncan not carrying as much weight as Mark Peters either. No, that'll also make a difference. You're quite right. The Audi trying to go on the inside of the BMW. Back in car with uh, Sean Watson-Smith, the local driver. Teammates bumping as you see in front. There's Marco De Santos squeezing inside. Oh, gosh. Yes, that's Peters down to fourth place. We really must ask Glenn to put some other identification in these cars so we can see a bit easier. But that's now, I think it's it's Foss in second and then De Villiers in third behind Briggs. Now look how close and he Santos, is there. And there's Watson Smith overtaking Peters and Sean van der Linden in the second BMW also having a look at Peters. So Peters within one lap has gone from second right down to about sixth and they're yeah. having a bumping session. He got hung out to dry somewhere they've all passed him. Now he has Duncan and Michael. This is going to be interesting. Both of these are very hard drivers. Duncan wants to win this race badly and of course Michael doesn't want to let him through. But you see how much slow the BMW is to there? Duncan's well, they... all over him and look how he pulls to the inside. Now that's uh, bordering on not what you're supposed to do but the guy wasn't there and so he is allowed to do it. And Janil de Villiers having a look uh, on the inside of his teammate, Duncan Foss. Yeah, that's Duncan's biggest problem. Not only is he trying to pass Briggs, but he's got his teammate right behind. And if he does leave it a little bit side, a little, bit, a little wide, he's going to lose the position, which is exactly what happened to Peters. And uh, following them all up, getting a grandstand view of the whole thing, Anthony Taylor. Yeah, the, the worrying part when you're in that position is when the guys go off in front, you just wonder whether you're going to have the sea which is going to open or you're going to have an accident. We're in lap nine now, and De Santos going for the outside of Duncan Foss, loses a position. And uh, oh, he's lost it himself. Okay. He's yes, up on yes, the yes. right hand side. We're with Terry Moss. Now, the question is where's Marco going to rejoin the. Oh, there. <laughs> just right in front there. And he's just lost another two positions going in. That's what happens when you go off, you lose the momentum in that step. And look how close that Audi is behind. Uh, must be must be short funded under there. But you're taking that Marco de Santos off the track for, for almost a split second and he loses three places. Correct. Still, Michael Briggs leading the three Nissans, then the Audi. Then Van der Linde, then another Audi, and then Marco de Santos way back, and then the two uh, opens. Well, Sean Watson-Smith seems to have tapped off the pace a little bit. He was uh, right there to begin with. We're in car once again in the engine Audi with Anthony Taylor. He's right up behind Sean van der Linde. Of course, van der Linde's teammate Mike Briggs heading the field at the moment in the widest BMW on the track. Yes, I can't wait to get back to that. There we go again. Now, you've got Foss trying to take him on the outside. Is this possible? Can they go around this corner together? No, not quite yet. He wasn't up far enough to force Briggs to take an inside line. This corner also goes on for a long, long time, which makes it difficult to go on the outside, but it can be done. Well, we're in car with Duncan Foss. He's right up behind teammate and championship leader, Janil de Villiers, who is only inches behind the BMW of Briggs. Now, watch how slow Briggs is through here, with the de Villiers actually having to brake to, to avoid going to the back of him. And then that slows him down, and they try, but... Well, they're having a go. Oh, and and it's Terry Moss. Moss. Terry Moss loses it all on his own. How does he manage to get through there? Nobody touches him. Well, that's the second of the... And the somebody Audi's else off on the right-hand side as well. That's, that's Peters. So Peters Mark looks Peters. to have got together either with the Audi of Taylor or the Nissan of Mark de Santos. I can't tell you. Well, Anthony Taylor having a go at Mark Peters. Peters manages to... Keep, let's have a re-look at... Uh, we're with Terry Moss. He looks on the inside onto the grass or oh. oh, loses traction. He and there goes, he goes too far on the inside. That's what happened. He just put two wheels of dirt, braked and just spun him around. How he didn't take out more cars, I don't know. Well, we're back with the leaders again. It's lap 18. It's Michael Briggs. Under a lot of pressure here now. Absolutely. I mean, can he hold these guys off any longer? Duncan Foss, having a look on the inside. I see Briggs keeps on closing shutting the door. shutting the door on the right hand side. Just no, no, exactly the same thing. Gets and he's the... taken Briggs off. Look, De yep. Villiers through. Van der Linde through as well. Yeah, you see, he moved Briggs oh, onto the... Oh, Foss has all lost it completely at the hairpin. 
I don't think he lost it. I think that Briggs has pushed him off. At that point in time, he had the accelerator flat and pushed him off. But that lets through. Who's leading now? Must be uh, De Villiers leading. De Villiers leading. We're in car once again with Marco De Santos. He is now in fifth position, is he? No, fourth position, that's right. We've Behind. got De Villiers, the two BMWs, and then Marco De Santos. Right, so BMW second and third. Sean must be very happy about that while everybody else in front has gone off. And there's Duncan Foss. He's back on the track now with those green lights. Well, with Janil leading here with the yellow lights. Lights are blazing as they come up behind one of the pro cars. That's uh, Marco de Cunha in the Elf Primera. Followed by the BMW again of Michael Briggs. This, this race is not over yet. Uh, no, it must be Sean van der Linde in, in second place here. We're in the car of Briggs right now. And now, he... Sean has got a smell of winning this race. He certainly has. He's right up uh, chasing de Villiers. There we see we're in car with Mike Briggs in third place. He's past de Cunha. Van der Linde going to have a look on, on either side? Well, well, he tried, but uh, he's only got, I think, this, what is it? This is his last lap now, so that was his last attempt to overtake him through there. He's got one more try at the corner at the bottom of the straight. But he's just a little far back over there, and I think that De Villiers has probably got this one under control. Marco De Santos sliding it out a little bit. There's uh, Mark Peters, and he's got Anthony Taylor right behind him. Yeah, that's, that's pretty close, and Anthony would like to make up that position as well. Oh, he's certainly going to have a go. Final corner, Janil De Villiers heads towards the straight for his second win of the day, but nice to see BMW with Sean van der Linde in second, Michael Briggs in third, Marco de Santos in fourth. Well, BMW are back, there's no question of that. It wasn't Michael Briggs who won the race, but it was Sean van der Linde who was Mike in second. Briggs. So BMW, BMW are back. Back on the podium, it's a hell of a race, wasn't it? Oh, what a fantastic race. This has probably got to be uh, the best race in, in Bankman Touring Car we've seen. To be fair, um, I, I was holding the queue up just a little bit and uh, the race was good because the guys behind me, the Nissans, uh, drove well. They didn't, uh, they didn't get too aggressive. So it was, I, th I think the, this formula is just on the up and up. It's getting better. The drivers are starting to respect each other. And it's wonderful for me in my hometown to, to have a podium finish and, and have a great result for the Touring Car Series. Sean, what was it like seeing uh, Michael and the two Nissans from your perspective? Excellent. <laughs> you enjoyed the race? Uh, I enjoyed it because I was, uh, I was basically a spectator. Um, most of the time. Once I got through into fourth, I knew I had a chance because I knew Michael was carrying the weight. Um, I thought I had a chance of, of, of doing something there. Unfortunately for, for Michael on the third last lap, he had a tangle with Duncan and uh, it cost him a place or two. Janil de Villiers celebrates his second win of the day, but the BMW guys are absolutely ecstatic. And de Villiers now just under 50 points ahead of Duncan Foss. There's a tie for third position. Sean van der Linde's good result takes him equal with Marco De Santos and Steve Harding touring car clock of the course hands the manufacturer's trophy to Nissan team manager Glenn Hall who now have an almost unassailable lead in the manufacturer's points but BMW catching up to Audi it's a lead they'll take to Kyle Army at the end of July